unboxings, uh, unboxing the two things, the two unbox. I just finished my Wednesday stream. All right, Chewbacca, Buck, the Roomba here. You're gonna fight the Roomba. She's gonna fight the Roomba. Uh, Roomba unboxing, probably coming off my other camera at 60 FPS. Anyway, two things I got to unbox. Someone was nice enough to forward R300 kefs that they order on Amazon to me. And when I'm done, I'm gonna ship them out. 66 pounds that fucking box is. So to, to put that in perspective, the uh, Yamo C103s, which there's only one set here right now, there should be two for sale though, um, is 52 pounds for the box. That's 66 pounds for the box and those speakers ain't small or light. So I'm packing those in a second. Also got the uh, IFI X series, which is their, which is according to IFI, their first truly portable device. So let's do this first and then fight that goddamn monstrosity. Did I put my knife back? I didn't. I just lost it. Seriously? Are we super serial now? I'm, I'm, I've lost, there it is. I found it. I found my knife. I can never tell how these, uh, how these IFI things go though. Uh, they do that, they do that thing where you can't like, Get it? It's about time. I mean, it doesn't look... Honestly, it still looks like it's going to be about 5 eighths of an inch thick. Let's see. Of course, it's got XDSD. Oh, there it is. There's the weird shape. I had to correct the colors of the LEDs. It does have the 3D matrix. It does have X space. It's got settings. What's my power level? So at 500 milliwatts, at 16 ohms, that's not bad for a full portable. Uh, I'll read more. You don't get the guy. I'm not unbox therapy. There's actually an unboxing and then a review. IFI accessing the website. How to attach it? Oh, oh, they give you special Velcro because it's got a weird ass shape. So let's see, we got a little bag. It's a very black bag. That's like the truest black bag. That's like no light can escape this IFI bag. Mmm, smells like sneakers. Oh, we got a silica packet. Chewbacca, don't eat this. Never let your animals near those. Uh, let's take out the accessory box because I like to make you people sweat. Sweat. Wet. You got me going like a turbo vet. Baby got back. Okay, the standard IFI grab bag, which I will never, ever get back in this box. That is a rule. So we got three pieces of tape, three pieces of uh, 3M dual lock, the thick stuff, another big piece of 3M dual lock. I don't think they planned this out very well. I'll, I'll probably tell you all to use blue tack, which is what I'm probably gonna use if I attach this to my phone. So you got the large USB, female to large wide USB female. All right, you got a female adapter. You basically get this, but in a little block. And I still don't understand why they give you both because why would you use the solid one when you could use this one? And then it gives you a USB three extension, which is really tightly wrapped. And I definitely don't want to touch that. You get a three and a half millimeter Toslink adapter. So three and a half millimeter fiber optic to full size fiber optic, which means this DAC is going to have a um, thing in it. Ooh. Ooh. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, that's like black chrome and that's lightweight plastic. I just feel, okay. give me a second. I need to like, I feel like this could be, like if I saw it just like that, like a cheap thing that holds razor blades. It's not though, so it's, that's a good sign. They did fix that thing, because I had a demo of this at Can Jam in New York. And the first thing I did is I turned this knob, and right here with the knurling and this corner met, my finger got pinched and sucked in, and I'm like, ah! And every time I go, ah, at a product, I was like, ooh. 
you stop and you fix. So we got little rubber feeties. Looks like there's flat rubber feeties with rounded rubber feeties on it to make it extend so it actually... Um, I'm seeing some fingerprints gather. I'm, I'm have a feeling it's going to be like, mm, anything shiny is bad. But, uh, okay, what do we have? Probably the headphone output. I'm assuming that's what that is. It's not labeled at all. It just says XDSD, which is the name of the thing. So I'm assuming that's the headphone output, and there's your fingerprints. Oh, God. We have a kilohertz indicator, an input indicator, a 3D indicator, an X-Base indicator. So this is a knob that makes a very cool squeak. I hope that remains. I hope that doesn't work itself out, because that's cool. That is also a push button. That's also a push button there. And let's, uh, that's so those are controls, headphone output. Bottom side, we've got, I'm assuming that's line in. I've never seen it indicated as a circle with two arrows. I mean, that also appears to be the fiber optic input because I can see the optical reader at the bottom. We've got a little plug that completely removes itself. So you're gonna end up leaving this at home or losing it. And that is so you can expose the USB mail. <laughs> Exposing the mail. And that's how you do that, and that's how you would get this as an OTG cable. So I'm leaving this on so I could use a normal USB cable and test this on a computer. Then you get the switched filter between measure and listen, which I always play around with. And you get a fiber optic, a, not a fiber optic, a standard USB micro cable that says five volts. I'm assuming that's to charge and this is signal. I don't believe this is gonna do signal at all. Now, there's no extra switches or buttons. I'm assuming everything is done through this and then rotation. All right, let's hold it. If I hold this down, does it come on? I may have to charge it. All right, so I'm basically going to charge this thing. What do I need? I do not need... I don't need anything here. But then again, you also don't need to see me pack this back up. I'm going to leave a little plug. Just all of it. All this is great. It's never going back in this bag, ever. I just send it back to IFI in a giant box and be like, look, stop. I can't ever put this stuff back in your box. Good, good, good. Um, well, I need the carry bag. I'll pull this all out for the actual review. I won't need it until then. Or all the... Well, I'll download the manual. That's the wonderful thing about the internet. I, I, the internet could have no other purpose than for me to download manuals, so I don't need to have... Oh, no. Oh, I did it the wrong way. All right, well, Zeos is, a, Zeos is the fail. So this is going to sit in some cookies right now until I get it done. Not that heavy, honestly. It, it weighs what it weighs. Now this. Oh, Now I just bought a hand cart, a big hand cart from Costco, and I'm like, oh, I wonder if I'll get to use it at all. And then this 66 pound box was in the bottom of my fucking steps, and I'm like, fuck everybody that lives. So I did take out my hand cart. And I did, did oh by the way um the guy offered me these in white apparently that'll look nice and I didn't like like I know the R300 is their higher line like this is the Kef high line so I immediately said yes I didn't actually look up the price and then when I just posted the picture of it arrived and said, those are pretty good but for two thousand dollars a pair on sale it's like what so these could very well be the most expensive speakers I've ever reviewed. Beating the other most expensive speakers I've reviewed, as far as bookshelves, of the LS50 caps. So we'll see. I mean, I'm not counting giant towers. The Clipsch Fortes. Chewbacca? Are you helping? I think she wants to help. Could you help a little less though? Just just a little baby bit less. And the main difference, which you'll see in a second, port plugs, very cool. And uh, if you notice, the port plugs have centers. So you can just barely port plug it, or really port plug it. Let's move these over here as well. Mother of God, those are huge. Now, most times when I'm 
testing speakers in my living room. My ohms are set up. I don't have the doom stacks. I'll just throw them on the top of the of the of the ohms, and I believe the ohms will hold a good deal of weight on their little screens. But these these don't weigh the normal amount, so I'm going to be real careful putting them up there. And then if I think they're going to do damage, I may have to pull my ohms out and actually put the um. Put the doom steps up and i'm gonna be this will be the first set of speakers i'm testing on the new crown 2502 dual retardo setup oh they're not that bad the grill is separate of course and of course the grill is terrifyingly bad not terrifyingly bad it's just ugh, i'm gonna come here we're gonna do this in my day bed Where is said opening? You're not an opening, you could stay closed. You're the opening. I'll tell you this, they're square. Considering I just did the Q350s and they had a little, little lot of bit of quirks about how to set them up. I'm interested to see what these are gonna do because both Actually, every CAF I've reviewed has been a single driver unit. Well, it's a coaxial, but it's always been just the coaxial. That's it. You get the driver and you're done. What this line is implementing, that is really, really shiny white. Let's look at the back first. Flared port, I'm going to need to pop out the caps here. I'll do it from the bottom. Actually, am I gonna be I'm gonna am, am I gonna be Zeos the dick and put these upside down? You know what? I'll do this right now. It's got that same amazing system where you could actually lose this. This is someone else's speaker. It's got that same amazing system where if you want to, instead of having bridges between the upper and lower, and put this in the bag, the upper and lower driver, usually in a, in a two-way speaker, there's a break like this and you can connect the lower low end or the tweeter to separate amplifiers. You want to put just tubes, which are usually much less powerful on the tweeter and get a little bit more out of that, you can. Or if you want to hook them up to heavy duty amplifiers for the, the bass, you could do that. And by, instead of having literally a piece of metal that goes in here to bridge the two, with like called a bridge, there is these knobs, which on this are metal. And basically the two ends lead there and you squish down a contact. And you've now bridged the two. Flared port, let's look at the front. And here's what makes this a special, different calf. This is why also we do this on the day bed, so I can just smash it. <laughs> wow, they look fucking gorgeous and white. Holy shit. Anyway, so you got a low-end driver, which is doing a fantastic job of hiding its surround. Yeah, it's definitely back there and it's just built forward. Real, real stainless steel. Real stainless steel. So you get a coaxial, so you get a mid-range, a tweeter, and a bass driver. Now this is much more reminiscent of the Elax that I've reviewed. The uh, the higher-end Elax, not the, uh, the B5 and B6, but the... Um, other ones that are higher in ranking. So this is gonna be interesting to hear what these sound like because I believe the LS50s had just this. Maybe a little bit larger than this. It seems a little bit smaller, but just one coaxial and that did the low end and the mid range and then it had the tweeter. So this is gonna have all the low end transferred down to this, which is gonna use this box, which is massive. And there's no funny shape. Just a giant box, and then it's got a decently sized flared port. Not as big as the, as the uh, Yamo port, but... Uh. Yeah. 
yeah, you'll sit up here just fine. This is why you buy ohms made in Brooklyn, because they can hold any speaker on top of them. Having fun, Bok Bok? Love, love, love. Anyway, so, okay, it's time to wire these massive amps up to these speakers and then see if I can blow them up. The answer will be yes. If I rip, actually, how many ohms are these? Do they actually say? What is your ohms? How many ohms? Did it even have a back panel that described the speaker? God, they're pretty. They are eight ohms. So at eight ohms, this amplifier is gonna put out 1,550 watts. And considering this speaker claims it only needs 25 to 120 watts, I think I have what is called headroom. Oof, that finish. That fucking finish. I've seen some shiny finishes. You know, SVS sends me things with shiny fin. That's the nicest one I've seen. That is, there's a couple of imperfections in it, but I mean, if you told me to paint a speaker and make it shiny gloss white, uh, I could spend all fucking year and it would never be like this. So, bravo Kef. Let's hope you don't sound like shit. Now we should probably look at what it looks like with the grill on. Even though this is again a fucking waste of time, because it's a full, it's just like the other ones where it's just a full size magnetic grill that's just going to cover. I mean, what? Why? Why would you do that? That's like driving a, a Ferrari around with the car cover on it. Nah, it's fine. It's all right. Let me get these hooked up. I want to hear them. Thank you for watching this unboxing. There might be another section. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't end. Maybe it does end. Either way, links in the description. And Chewbacca. FedEx delivered a box, and I'm like, what does that sound? Here. It sounds like when you're near oil or lava in Minecraft. It sounds like when you're near lava in Minecraft. So I'm like, what? And then I realized where it was from. And this is an amazingly like my grandfather box, boxing job on this. Where this is a box, and this is a box. Are they two separate boxes? Are they just two separate boxes? Hold on, they might just be two separate boxes if they're just taped together. Of course, I ordered three of these. Ah, oh, there you go. So note to self, don't order three from the rootbeerstore.com. You heard me. The rootbeerstore.com. Actually, I think it's the root beer com No, it's the root beer store. Uh, yeah, no, it's not all root beer. I, I'm not prepared for that sort of commitment yet. But, uh, totally prepared for six types of root beer. Again, this is a complete grab bag. Yeah, fill me up. Nice. This is a complete grab bag. I have no idea which root beers. There should be six root beers, six orange creams, and six cream sodas. And, uh... I'm going back this weekend to my family in New York, and we'll be able to see. All right, so here's the root beer. Oh, we got a glass bottle of a and All right, that's, that was worth it on its own. By the way, um, if you're thinking about buying uh, play, something from this store, uh, be, be forewarned. Does it have the price that I paid? Hold on. Does it have the price I paid for the fucking... No, it does not. All said and done, 18 bottles, six, six, and six, cost me $80 shipped. That's the problem. They're $11 for the six pack, and that's not bad. That's, that's $33 for, for, for that many bottles. And, and then you ship it, and it's like, oh, it's another $38. And you're like, uh, I mean, I grasp why. Oh. <laughs> Let's do the root beers first. Uh, Captain Eli's root beer. Oh my god. This is becoming an obsession. I have to bring this home. Uh, Dog and Suds root beer. Driving style. 
Uh, A&W. Oh, we got more Dr. Browns. Draft style now. So we didn't really like Dr. Brown. So we're going to see how that works out. Then we've got Americana root beer. Handcrafted. Sweetened with pure cane sugar. I really want to drink one of these now. Holy fuck. What is happening to my body? And we got Frosty Vanilla Root Beer. Which I'm not going to count this as like not a root beer because it says vanilla. Because vanilla is a legit flavor that they put in root beer. Detroit. Good. Now on this side of the bottle. Of the box. Of the bottles with boxes in them. Um, we'll save the orange cream for last. Death Valley Cream Soda. A taste of the Old West. Uh, Americana Honey Cream. So, Americana Root Beer and Americana Honey Cream. I'm imagining when you do these, like, random packages, they give you the ones that they're not selling a lot of. Which is why I have an A&W and a Dr. Brown's. Uh, Fireman's Brew. The original Fireman's Brew. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Manhattan Special Vanilla Cream. That's interesting, actually. We've got uh, Oak Creek Blonde Barrel Aged Root Beer. What? Shouldn't this be root beer then? I mean, it's too pale. I mean, it's... Oh, that one's a little bit confusing. I don't know what to do with that one. And we got a Hank's Gourmet Vanilla Cream, which I could actually buy down the street for way less than $4.44 a fucking bottle, which is what I actually ended up paying. Uh, here we go. Oh, no. Oh, no. Main root. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Route 66 sodas, real cane sugar, orange soda. So here's the thing. If I figure out one of these is like the greatest thing ever, I could just order specifically from this store or go find it. Bedford's Orange Cream Northwest Soda Works, established in 1984. It's very clear. I'm not, I'm not addicted to soda and I don't need your fucking advice. A crush. They give me a goddamn bottle of crush. I can accept that. I can accept that. And finale, uh, Captain Eli's Orange Pop. So I got a Captain... Uh, what did I share? I got a Captain Eli's and an Americana root beer and this and cream. I'm excited. Are you excited? I'm fucking excited. And, you know, they shipped perfectly. Nothing got cracked and there wasn't even fragile written on the box, so... And that was shipped vertically. This arrived standing up. This was on top... Actually, both horizontal. I meant horizontally. Okay. That's all for this this it issue, this episode, this it issue sode. Issue sode's a word.